Hi Floss Tube. I'm Jennifer and this is Stitching with the Waves. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch and quilting and whatever other crafts I'm working on. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who left a comment on my last video with a warm welcome back because it had been so long since my previous video. I really appreciate that. It felt good um, to read all your lovely comments and hear that you missed me and you were excited I was back. I was so excited myself to be back because um, I really enjoy making the videos. So it's been, I think, about three weeks. Um, I didn't make a video last week because I had some exciting stuff that I knew was coming in the mail and I wanted to wait and film this week so I could show that to you rather than waiting, you know, like filming a video and then having it arrive right away and having to wait for the next time. So let's jump in with some cross-stitch FFOs. So the first exciting thing that happened, oh wait, I had one thing I wanted to say before that. I knew it, just checking my notes. Um, the, in my last video, I had quite a few comments on um, questions about some of the patterns I do that are from like, French or Italian designers, and I realized um, I need to give a little bit more information about those. Some of the stuff I stitch, like Kringles, I can just say, it's Kringles, it'll help Needleworks, and you guys can go easily search that up yourselves and find it everywhere, it's all over the place. But other stuff um, comes from like, French blogs or you know Italian shops that are online and things like that. So I will start trying to really pay more attention to put links to those things in the description box and also give you a little bit more information in the video about them so that you can find them if you're interested in them. So look in the description box um, for a direct link and if you see something in the video that I don't link, let me know because sometimes it's hard to tell like what everybody knows how to find and what is something that's a little more out of the box. So, but I'm happy to share whatever information I have about those pieces. So first thing that happened that was exciting is that we got finally permission to show our pieces from the Love to Cross Stitch retreat that was supposed to happen back in April. And obviously like everything else, COVID happened and we weren't able to meet in person. The retreat was run by LaDonna uh, and her floss tube and Etsy shop and things like that are sampling of memories. And she lives here in Virginia. She organized the retreat. Priscilla and Chelsea were supposed to come and we were gonna have a finishing class with them. So we got a piece to stitch with all of the, all of the fabric and all that sort of stuff back in, I believe it was January or February. So we got the black fabric, which you can see I did not use. I went with something else because the black is so hard for me to see. And then we got some needles, um, the gold eye needles in here. And we also got the floss. Put that on some fabric, on some white paper. I remembered my white paper today, you guys. So here we go. Okay, there's the floss colors. Um, all fancy, fancy floss from Classic Color Works. And she used, these are, she sells all sorts of like floss jewelry or whatever you want to call them um, in her in her Etsy shop. So she has this little thing that says fancy floss and the charms, little button and a pair of scissors. So super cute. Um, so this all came up packaged super nicely in a like a, I guess kind of mesh project bag you'd say. And so I looked at this, I knew black fabric was going to be super hard for me to stitch on and I also knew I wanted to kind of go with looking at the pattern we got gold was one of the really the honeycomb color was one of the really prominent colors and I wanted to have more of this red white and blue so that I could leave it out all summer long as like more of a patriotic piece rather than just a one month long piece so before I show you my finished project with the pattern and everything I thought I would show you all the stuff that we got for the retreat so we got to go um, a couple of weeks ago and pick up a box full of all the stuff that we would have received at the retreat. And then Priscilla and Chelsea made a finishing video that we could watch on our own time and do the finishing. So what do we have here? Okay, so all the things came labeled nicely so you could tell what they were. So this would have been, this is the little like hello tag. So this would have been like the welcome gift you got at the beginning. So little Ray Dunn pen that says Faith and I love to cross stitch. Retreat, just journal, notebooks, you can keep notes while you were there. And then I got a Ray Dunn mug that says Dreamer with some 
candies. And then it also has a little bag. It's got a lens wipe and more needles and um, a little flower, um, what do you call it, waxer, which is exciting because I tried to order a waxer um, with one of my recent orders from a needle workshop, but it was out of stock and not gonna be coming back. It wasn't just back ordered, it was like discontinued, I guess. Or, sorry, um, a, a one-time thing, so you, I couldn't get it. So I was excited when I got that. I was like, oh yeah, I know how to order one, I've got one. Um, I had wanted to try it out um, on some floss I have that's kind of tricky to use. So that was the welcome gift. And then another gift that I believe everyone got is this pattern from Little Stitch Girl called Haunted Hill Road. So it's the, the little street that's a Halloween theme. And I believe she has different roads for like all the different seasons and holidays and stuff. Okay, so then one of the other gifts we got was this bracelet. Oop. Let me see if I can get the charm spread out a little bit here. So it's got scissors, it's got like a little crystal in a teardrop shape, a sunflower, and then it's got one of her um, yep, paper to block my head so you can actually see it focus. Okay, there we go. Scissors, sunflower, little like jewel thing. And then this one here, the button has the picture of the pattern on it that we were given to stitch. That's an exclusive pattern from Stitching with the Housewives, which will be released next year, I guess in April. Um, it's exclusive one year to the people who attended the retreat and then it'll be available to everybody. Okay, put that back in. The table, you guys. We've got my kids' projects, school stuff, more kid projects, my projects, my sewing machine, all the stuff for the video. It's all over this table and I'm, I managed to do this video without knocking something on the floor. It's gonna be amazing. So this is another piece. So this sticker says you're a winner. So this would have been like a door prize that I won. So it's just one of these little um, stands with like a tart pan top. So um, I might either stitch an autumn pattern that's circular to go up here, or I am decided if I wanna keep this out all year long, maybe. So I was thinking I might spray paint it because this orange color doesn't really go with the decor in my house, except in the fall, I add a little bit of orange. So the rest of the year, it doesn't coordinate that well. So I was thinking I would spray paint it possibly, and then I could change out the pieces on the top if I wanted to do something seasonal, circular to change, or I don't know, we'll see. Possibilities, possibilities. All right, one more door prize. And this one came with a little truck filled with the pumpkins in the back, and it does light up. It's got a little uh, light in it that you can turn on. And then I got a spool of black gingham ribbon and this Ray Dunn candle that says family and it's um, Harvest Spice scent, super good. So I can't wait to put these two little things out on my tray, get that autumn drum that I'm gonna make finished up and put that on the tray, get it all decorated up. So I wanted to show you guys this stuff so I can start actually using all of it. In here to kind of cushion things because I'm trying not to knock things off or break things right now. Okay, so that I think is everything from the box there. Okay, very good. Now we can move on to the actual finish itself. So we got the May Truckin' Along pattern from Priscilla and Chelsea, Stitching with the Housewives, that I think the retreat they did, they were gonna do um, in March got the April pattern. We got the May pattern and then they started releasing um, the June pattern to the public. So next year in April, you should be able to purchase the May pattern. But here is a little sneaky peek. Um, before I give you the sneaky peek, I'm gonna say I changed a lot. So you might wanna go um, search the hashtag on um, Instagram, trucking along. I think it's hashtag PC trucking along. So you can see what the actual colors look like and stuff because this is, changed up a bit. So here we go, whoop. Just bumped that with my finger. Okay, so we received the finishing piece and we also received a lot of um, fabric and ribbon and stuff to finish. I changed it up just slightly, so I'll go through all my changes now. So first change, the black fabric, I decided just wasn't gonna work for me. So I 
had a piece of turquoise 28 count Monaco that I purchased from eBay, already dyed turquoise. But when I got it, you know, the color on your computer screen is a little different than in real life. It was a very bright turquoise. I'd been hoping for something that was a little more muted. And um, so I've had it in my stash for a while. I hadn't used it for anything because the turquoise was just too bright for my preferences. So I decided to cut off a piece of that and try coffee tea dyeing it and see what happened. And that turned it green. So all of the blue, because turquoise has got like blue and green in it, right? All the blue went away. So it was basically mint green with like the coffee tea dye antique look, which is beautiful, but was not going to work <laughs> with this piece. Um, I was being cautious about what I used because I knew we were gonna get the finishing fabrics and trims and stuff at the retreat, and I didn't wanna to stray too far away from the color palette. So like I wanted to keep, I wanted to use all of these flosses. I didn't wanna change the floss colors. I wanted to keep those and just change the background fabric color so that I wouldn't stray too far away and then get to the retreat and have this piece that doesn't go with any of the finishing stuff that they have. So I decided I would put that same piece of turquoise coffee tea dyed fabric in with some navy blue dye, writ dye. So I used the navy blue writ, put that in there for a while and came out pretty good. Um, I put it back just a flash in the coffee tea again and baked it for a little bit and I think it turned out great. It was a nice blue color that I was looking for that went really well with the blue floss color. The original truck was gold so I switched that to red because I really wanted the red and the blue to stand out more since I had blue fabric I figured I'd go with the red truck. So that I think came out super cute and has all the daisies. Um, it's just on here with the magnet and I keep bumping it with my one hand so it's not staying. And then they gave us the red uh, check fabric in the background, the daisy trim, the red checked ribbon, and then it also came with some black checked ribbon. It came with the daisy as well. But the black checks, I just felt like, since I didn't use the black fabric, um, it didn't go as well, and I really wanted to like have it be a little bit more red, white, and blue. So I ended up using, you can see back here, this burlap ribbon that has lace it comes like this the burlap with the lace down the center then i used the red check they gave us and then i had this um navy and white polka dot ribbon so i stuck that on because when i just had the burlap and the red gig on i had actually glued the flower on and everything and i was like that's not not quite right so i had the the navy and white and i pulled the flower off stuck a navy and white on there and put the flower back on so i think it came out great it's just on this uh, like cutting board thing that says something behind it. It was from the spring collection at Hobby Lobby and um, I think it worked out great. So super excited to have that one done and finally be able to show it to you since that was, you know, I was hoping to show it to you back in April. All right, let me just stack that right back in the box with all that stuff. So I just have slightly less stuff all over the place. All right, my second exciting thing that came in the mail was my four pieces that I had sent off to Vana, the Twisted Stitcher. I'd won a giveaway from her for some free finishing, and I had sent off the four pieces a while ago and told her, you know, don't worry about time frame. Whenever you can fit me in amongst your paying clients is totally fine. So just got them all back last week. I'm so excited. You might have seen a preview of them on Instagram. If you follow her there, she showed pictures of all of them but I'll go through each of these. Okay, so the first piece is Sweet Season by La Comtesse de Pointe de Cour. She is a French blogger and it's on 32, 32 count lambs wool linen. And I had this one finished, it's got a little hanger up here so that it could either be an ornament, but I think I will actually probably put it on the handle of one of my china cabinets. So it's just got a green ribbon there and then the back is this fabric. It's a little bit shadowy in here this morning. I'm filming a lot earlier than I usually do and this room does not get the morning light. It gets the afternoon light. So it's a little bit, a little bit dim, but we'll make do because this is when I have time to film this week. All right, so that was the first piece. Second piece is Fragments in Time from 2018 number one. There are a bunch of little stitch cards um, and there's a whole bunch in the series, maybe eight or 10 or something. I just had, um, number one, and so I decided to just stitch that one up really quickly to send off to her. 
I did switch up the color scheme completely and it's on 32 count lamb's wool linen and I believe this is all DMCs. And I just had it finished as a little pillow so I could stick it in my bowl. Focus. There we go. Stick it in my bowl in my china cabinet with the other little pillows that I have been finishing. So she did the ruched navy blue ribbon and then it's so dark in here, but can you see that? It's got like little navy blue, like super dark navy blue fabric with little uh, floral motifs on it. So super cute one as well. And like her, I mean, I don't know if you can, like look how flat it is and like how firm it is. Like, I mean, oh my gosh, it's just finished so beautifully. Then this one is ABC Maison Bleu from Le Grilles de Maurice, which is another French blogger. I will, all of these ones that I am mentioning that are from French bloggers or whatever, they'll all be links in the description box. I've already looked them all up, pasted them all into a Word document, so all I'll do is cut and paste in the description box. So they will all be there this week. So this one is on 40 count weathered shingle linen from R&R. Super cute, little blue bow up top, blue cording, and like a blue floral, and these, they're not roses, I don't think. I'm not good with my flowers, but kind of corally pink flowers on the back, which go perfectly with my little coral pink flowers on the front. Absolutely gorgeous, love this one. And again, this will be, um, it's got a little hanger, so I can put it on one of the knobs of my china cabinets. So that'll be out all year long, and then at Christmas time, I'm trying to get a few so I can switch out for the holidays. And then this is 12 Days of Christmas from Paulette Stewart. It's a free pattern available on her blog. I had it done as a mounted flat fold. I stitched this one. I started it for Jolly July last year in 2019, but I didn't get enough time to finish it before Christmas last year. So I worked on it this year, and when I won the finishing, I was like, quick, I've got to stitch that last day so I can send this one to Vanna. It's gorgeous. Like, it's just, it's so thick, so sturdy. It's got the little holder here, so it'll, you know, stand open as an easel. The back is just the red polka dots. So absolutely love these. They are just done so well. They are amazing. Love, love, love them. So thank you so much to Vanna. I was so excited to win that and I'm so excited to have these and display them. So thank you so much. All right, that's all my finishes. Um, I don't have any finished stitching this video because I had four new starts. <laughs> so rather than focusing on getting anything done, I just expanded my whip pile by a lot. So let's work our way through those. First one we've got, now everybody knows this one, it's Kringles. Here we go. I'll show you the far back view first. Is it even all in there? I guess so. Um, I'm so close, you guys. So last time I showed it to you, I was working on this room here in the center and I got that finished up and then I had a little more time that day so I went ahead and started the next window over. My goal last month was to get this window stitched in September. This one's finished in October so that I can get this FFO'd in time to hang it for Christmas this year. So I'm gonna be picking this one up again really soon. As soon as I finish my fall stitching that I'm in the middle of, um, this is gonna be my priority to get that last window done so it'll be ready to finish. And I just really <laughs> don't even know where we're gonna put this down. There's not any space to put another pile. Okay, the next one is one I actually, it's a whip. It's gonna be a new start for you guys because I forgot to show it in my last video. It was like so tall, so small and rolled up. It like slipped down to the bottom of my whip basket. And I just, when I was doing the whip parade last time, completely missed it. So the Facebook group for this one will be in the description box. Um, it is a technique called, let me read it off of here, Hito Mizashi. Hito Mizashi, it's a Japanese embroidery technique. So I put on this piece of banding and oh gosh, I had thought I had left the little card out. It's 27 count banding, oh here it went. It, I got it from Inspired Needle. 27 count banding, three and a half inches wide and it, the color is natural. So my plan is to wrap it around a spool. Let me see if I can turn it this way and scroll up slowly. So the idea, let me, what I'm working on right now is down here. So it's not so much the patterns as the technique. 
So first you stitch all of the horizontal rows going this way, just, you know, zigzagging back and forth, all the horizontal stitches. Then you stitch all the vertical stitches, and then you start stitching the diagonals in one direction, then you stitch the diagonals in the other direction. So, um, I wanted to try this out. I saw, um, I can't even remember where I first saw it. I saw somebody post it on a blog, I guess. And so I'll show you each of the patterns individually. So I went to this Facebook group. The woman's name who uh, runs it and puts up the patterns is Nan Vanderstorm. And I believe she's Dutch. When you go to the, to join the group, you'll see she'll post um, at the top of the page in like announcements. She has all of the, the individual posts. She posts, um, I think it's one a week. Um, and they're pinned at the announcements area. The directions are in Dutch, but right underneath the Dutch is written in English. So you don't have to do any translating or anything. You just have to click the see more button and scroll down past the dire Dutch directions to see the English. So she's posted, I think there were 12 of these style of, of, um, patterns, more of like the black work look. And then she's now switched over and she is posting darning patterns, darning motifs. And so I've decided if I'm going to do, I have, you know, it's, it's this long. I might have room to do one more over here on this side. And I definitely have room to do more over here, several more over here. So I might pick some of the darning patterns to put down at this end. Um, or I might just keep going and do all this style and then get another piece of banding and do some darning. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I also feel like I need to kind of, like maybe the edges are a little plain on this. The edge of this banding is finished. I don't know if you can see that. It's a finished edge, so it's not going to unravel, but it's just plain. It doesn't have any sort of decoration or anything on it. And you know, I like decoration and something a little more elaborate. So we'll see, I don't know. This was just totally an experiment. I saw it, it seemed easy. I already had the banding and I figured why not? You, I mean, you can do this on anything. You can just do it on a piece of fabric. You can do any, you know, any arrangement of lining up the rectangles that you want to. But um, that's my little experiment in Japanese embroidery. All right, next are some of my new starts. So this is Winter Sampler Banner from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. I've been putting these, where's my hand? Over here on my clock shutter. There's just, I swear, this video is a challenge today because of the space limitations. Okay, so this is my start on Winter Sampler Banner. The called for fabric was like, I think it was an ice blue, no, silver Ada. Silver Ada, so it's like a light gray color. Um, and then it's, this one is a little bit different than her normal one, so I, it's hard to tell in this printout because my printer's not good. So it has bright white, B5200, snow white, the, what is it, 3865, and then 765, which is a very pale gray. And then it has um, a couple of darker shades as well. There's just two, so like it's the, it's using the colors. I wish it would show up better on camera. So for example, the very top is the snow white and then we have some of the bright white and then we have some of the silver. And in person, it looks really pretty. It's a very, very delicate effect, which reminds me of like that delicate time after it snows. And I think it's just gonna turn out beautifully. Um, I went with more of a blue fabric. I had, I wanted to do it on 28 count. Um, so that it would be the same, come out the correct size to go on my, um, on the shutter. So I had only had white 28 count fabric, uh, Monaco, 28 count Monaco. So I decided to go ahead, since I had charcoal gray dye and navy dye, I would try dyeing my own. So I did charcoal gray first, but it was just very, um, like mauvey purple gray. Do you know how grays do that sometime? And I was looking for more of like a true gray. Um, so that just didn't really work for me. So I added a tiny bit of navy blue dye to the gray writ dye bath. <laughs> I was like, yeah, hey, what, what can happen, right? We'll just dump some gray in there. Dump some navy in there with the gray. So I put just a little splash of the navy in and I think that came out really good. It made it 
more of a blue gray. Um, and then I used three of the called for colors, the, the white, the snow white, and the like, silvery gray color. But then I switched, I'm using more of like a lavender and then this blue that I just started putting in here, um, I feel like might end up being a little bit too close. I only have a few tiny stitches there. It might be too close to the fabric color. So I'm gonna do a few more stitches of it and then I might pull it out and just go one shade darker with this one. Um, we'll see, it's kind of a purpley blue and then I have more of a lavender color as well. So that's Winter Sink for Banner. Okay, next one is, um, so this piece here, my, oh, this is so hard to point, this drum from Summer. It was a stitch along with um, a French blogger um, named Mimi and her blog is Flannery au Fil de Saison, which I think is Stroll Through the Seasons. So I, it's a free sal that you can join. Um, and then she sends out the parts, like every other week she emails you a PDF with part of the pattern. And you send her a picture and then she sends you the final part after you send her a picture of the previous sections that were completed. So I'm putting links to this sal in the description box. You just go there and put a comment on the post that you say, I would like to register for this sal and she will email you, start emailing. She'll email you all the parts that have already come out and she'll email you the, um, the current, the, she'll email you, then add you to her list to email you every time. Words are really hard this morning, you guys. Um, and if you want the previous sales, the previous, so spring, summer, and autumn have all been released and completed. So if you want to, you can go on this winter sale blog post and say, also please send me the previous seasons. And she'll do that as well, because I, I didn't join until the summer. So she sent me all of the spring pieces at once. So this, it's super tiny, it printed out super tiny. That is most of the completed piece. So this blank space right there, you have to send her a picture of your completed piece and then she'll send you that final part. So that's how it works. This is what I have so far. So two parts have been released. So this is step one and two. So you can see it's not a ton of stitching. It's really not at all. It's very doable to keep up with it. So this is winter in French and I have completely changed up the color scheme so that it will coordinate with my winter sampler banner. I'm trying to be, um, you know, as I started to stitch a lot more seasonal stuff this year, I'm starting to try to figure out what are my favorite color palettes for each of the seasons so that I can stitch the seasonal pieces using, like pull from those to stitch the seasonal pieces so they all kind of coordinate and go with my decor and go with each other so I can arrange them in groupings together and stuff. Okay, so that's winter. And then she also has another one. There's two going on right now. I forgot to print out the picture of the full thing. So you can see this one here. Noel, it's got a tree and a teddy bear over on the other side that we'll get to later. This one also has two parts out. So these are coming out um, in the same week. She sends out first winter and then a couple of days later, Noel comes out. So. I'm trying to keep up with these right when they come out. I switch over and stitch on these so that I don't get behind on the parts so I can have them finished for the holidays. So love this one. And again, I switched this one up to be the colors that I typically use for my Christmas things. I use my Christmassy reds and Christmassy greens that I like. Um, and this one I actually, I was able to get to Joann's you guys and Hobby Lobby. Um, I went all the way out there. It's about 30 minutes away and there's my Joann's in my town is super tiny, but 30 minutes away, right by the Hobby Lobby, there's a huge one, huge. So I was able to get there. I got some fabrics for finishing my autumn stuff and I got the fabric to finish that Noel piece. So I also made sure that my reds and greens were gonna go with that as well. So I'm excited about that. And then, what else we have? So those were, oh, those are my three new stuff. One more new stuff. This is my cottage of the month for November from Fleur Lynn. She has, she is uh, another French designer and she has a uh, online shop where you can purchase the PDFs of these and print them out at home. So you don't have to do, um, you know, shipping or anything like that. 
So this is November and it's apples in November. So it's got the tree and two baskets of apples. So this is where I'm at. This is my current project that I'm working on. I've kind of been a monogamous stitcher. My rotation has fallen off because I seem to have pieces that I'm really wanting to get finished. And so I'm just, you know, picking that up and finishing it and then moving on to the next thing. So right now I'm working on November. I am doing the house last because I'm not sure what color I want to do for the house. So I thought I'd get everything else in there and then I'll go back and figure out. I'm thinking a blue cottage, but I'm not certain. So that one's moving along. Hopefully have that one done in the next couple of days and then I'll switch over to Kringles and get that last window finished. And then I'll move on to some other stuff. Hi, are you on a school break? Five minutes. Five minute break from school at home. School's in the basement. All right. So that is all of my whips, new starts, all that stuff. All right, let's move on. I'm gonna talk about quilting quickly because I don't have a whole lot of it, but just a little. I am working on this pattern from McCall's Quilting called Scrappy, Scrappy Strips Block, and it's a free pattern. Did you wanna say hi to the video or no? Okay, bye. Okay, she just came to get a snack. All right, this is Scrappy Strips Block. It's a free pattern. And I bought a jelly roll, and the jelly roll is, there's my list, Christmas T Traditions by Riley Blake. And I have finished my blocks, all 48 of them. They are all, I'm um, doing quilt as you go. So you piece the fronts, and then you add the batting and the backing, and quilt it. So I have finished quilting it, I've ironed them, I have trimmed them all down to be a perfect 10 inch square. We're good to go, time to start joining them. So just yesterday and this morning, I was cutting some little joining strips, um, working my way through that. So it takes a little while, it was just, I don't know, a lot of math to figure that out for me, because it's still, this will be the second, my second quilt, so it's a little, a um, little tricky. What, what's that? My school leader, I'm using that. It works better. What works better? School your school computer? Okay, that's fine. Your other one's not working well right now? No, it's just, um, that's your presenting. It goes way okay. more faster. Okay, that's fine. So use that one. Okay. Technology issues, school. <sighs> okay, she figured it out on her own. She just wanted to tell me she figured it out on her own. So that is a huge improvement from the first few weeks of school that she can now kind of troubleshoot herself. All right, so that's my quilt. Um, hopefully next time you see it, I will have at least some of the rows joined together, if not the whole thing. Um, it doesn't have much to go. I should have joined the rows, um, then you know, join them all together into the big top and to put the binding on. So it's coming along pretty quickly. Um, let's see, so next, quilts is done. So haul, that's in this box over here that box over. Okay, so one thing I got, this is from an Etsy shop called Sinin Miniature, C-I-N-E-N. -N -E -N. Um, and it's an Italian shop. So let me get the little bag, it's tiny, hold on you guys. I know this is the rustling and the tininess make this hard to open. Okay, oh my goodness, I'm struggling right now to get this open. Why? I have it open before, just got stuck to the sticker, that's all. Okay, here we go. So this is, I'm going to guess, the world's smallest letterbox, printer's tray. So here we go, I'll move over so we can see. So teensy little printer's tray, big printer's tray in reality. I saw this came up, you know, Etsy like suggests things for you on like the page when it first pops up. And of course I search printer trays so often this popped up. I mean, it's tiny. Look at this, like the boxes in there, like that one is, that square one is literally the size of my finger now, right? I feel like we need the white because my head is remotely in the screen. It won't focus on this thing. Um, so yeah, like this one, it's it, the, you know, the larger ones are literally the size of my fingernail. So do I attempt to stitch little things to go in here? I really kind of want to, but I don't know how well it'll go. So we'll see. I did get uh, quite a while ago that piece of 60 count silk gauze. So maybe 
maybe I could try to stitch something on there and cut it down, push, put it in here. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But I just figured I had to have this. It was too cute. Had to have it. Okay. I'm just gonna put it back in the box so it doesn't get broken. All right. Next up, I got more fabric. This is Tranquility by Jerry Robinson from Riley Blake Designs. I got these charm packs. Oh gosh. So you're probably gonna hear it in the background. I hear the clarinet warming up. It's band class this morning at school in the basement. So you might hear a little bit of a very beginner clarinet playing going on down there. Let's get this video wrapped up before it gets too loud. Okay, so I'll see if I can just kind of fan these. If that's not working because you, you're seeing like the backs this way. Yeah, there we go. Okay. It's focusing on me and not the fabrics. Okay. So just lots, it's like navy blue and gray and like an off white um, color. So I think it's going to make, oh yeah, look, I just noticed on the back. There you go. That's what all the fabrics are. So I got four of these charm packs. My plan is to do a disappearing nine patch quilt with this. So you make three squares across, three squares down, um, and then you cut them apart in the center. And that main nine patch is called the parent block. You cut it apart in quarters. So you have four daughter blocks and then you rearrange the daughter blocks so that it doesn't look like a nine patch quilt. It looks like a much more complicated design, but really it's, Pretty simple because all you had to sew was a nine patch and then sew them, cut them apart and sew them back together again. So that seemed like something I could handle given my current quilting abilities. So I also went ahead and got um, sashing to go in between them and backing and binding. This is just solid navy and a off white. So that will be my next quilt as soon as this Christmas one is done. All ready to go with that because apparently I'm obsessed with quilts now. So I gotta have the next one lined up and ready to go before I finish the previous one, right? I am really trying to keep myself though. Uh, I really wanna start that one, but I'm trying to keep myself to one quilting whip at a time. Um, Cause it is quite expensive to make the quilt. I don't have a stash of fabric. I can't make a scrappy quilt out of, you know, fabric scrap scraps or, you know, just go to my fabric collection and put something together, you know, that's like a fabric collection to make a quilt out of because I don't have that. So I have to buy all of these things and that adds to the cost considerably. Um, it's, you know, a big outlay all at once to get everything I need to make a quilt. So I am trying to keep myself to one so I don't end up buying enough stuff for like five quilts and then not ever getting them made. So make one, then buy the next stuff. Although that's not going super well because I've already pre-ordered two fabric collections, one that's coming out in November and one that's coming out in January. So I need to stitch fast if I'm gonna keep to that, that plan of keeping the fabric situation under control. All right, I have to stick with the notes today, guys. Sorry, I keep looking down all the time, but I just, my brain's, it's early. My brain is not functioning well. All right, we talked about quilts. We talked about the haul. Okay, yes, another new start I have planned. So yesterday, I was reading a French blogger that I follow, and she mentioned a new sal that she's gonna start um, next Monday, October 12th. And it's by Stephanie B, and her website is stephaniebee.com. So you can go there. It's Beginner Heart Anger. Oh, I forgot to print the picture. Let me, I have it. I took a screenshot so I could print and show you guys, but I forgot to print, so here we go. I'll show you on the phone. I think it'll work okay. All right, here's a picture of the project out of the way. Sorry, the reflection. Okay, the, I think the reflection's off. Okay. All right, so this is the same project, just stitched on different fabrics and different fabric counts um, and different colors. So it's just a basic beginner hard anger project. Um, you stitch, this one is stitched on the red fabric with white floss, and then what they put behind it? Looks like they put black. You see, through the, the pieces that you've cut from the hard anger, it looks like they put a black backing fabric on it and then finish it as a little pillow. So I have this piece. I think I showed it to you when I went through all of my um, patterns that I have in my binder that I want to stitch one day. It is from a cross stitch magazine. It was probably from the 90s. Um, it was a 
a Christmas piece. The Hardanger part was a white house. And then the window, like the front window of the house was cut out. And through that, you stitched on a separate piece of fabric, a Christmas tree in cross stitch. And you put that behind the Hardanger piece. You can see the Christmas tree through the window of this Hardanger house. So I love that, but it seems to be much more complicated than just a beginner piece. So I ripped that article out probably back in the 90s, saved it. I still have it. I still want to stitch it, but I need to figure out how to do Hardanger first. And I don't think that's the piece to start with. So this seemed like it'd be perfect. I was like, great, we'll try it. So I did a little bit of conversion number wise. They recommended 14, sorry, they recommended, so you can't do Ada. So they recommended either 28 or I think about 31, 32 count fabric with her two suggestions. So I think that's what those two, the smaller pillow was stitched on like 32 count and the larger one on uh, 28 count. So I, like I have a bunch of 36 count fabric. Um, so it was kind of wanting to use some of that. And I also, you're supposed to use pearl cotton, this DMC pearl cotton. And I have a ball of it from a, I think it was from a sampler that I stitched one time. Um, and this is pearl 12, the size is 12. Um, so, make my head go away. I'm gonna, nope. All right, whatever, you don't need to see it, it's fine. The pearl cotton, you get the idea, it's the balls of, of yarn, right? So, I have 12, and she recommended, for 32 count fabric, she recommended eight, which is larger than the 12, and 12, because you need two sizes, you need a thick and a thin. So she recommended eight and 12. So I need, I either needed to buy more pearl cotton, which I didn't really necessarily want to do, or I need to find, use a smaller count fabric and find something thinner than the 12 to use as the other, other thread. So I decided to go with 36 count fabric because I don't, I have some, quite a bit actually, and I don't like it for cross stitch. Um, it just, I know a ton of people stitch on it, that's fine. My personal preference is not for 36 count because I feel like two threads is too much and one thread is not enough coverage for me. And I just never am happy with the coverage that I get with it. So I thought maybe I could use it for this. So I found a piece of 36 count flax in Berglin and I found my Guterman silk thread in color 800, which is thinner than the, the DMC Pro Cotton. So that's my goal. That's, that's my plan right there. Oh, there we go. That's better on the lighting. To use the flax fabric with a crew colored threads. I'll use the DMC 12, the, yeah, the DMC curl cotton, curl, curl cotton 12 and the Guterman silk sewing thread. So I have my thicker, my thinner, my fabric. If this doesn't work, I'll regroup. I do have some 32 count fabric I could use, I think. Um, or I could go purchase some of the pearl cotton in a thicker size and make that work. But I'm going to try it with this stuff just because I want to try what I already have. So the salad is going to start. It's free. Uh, she is just going to be posting it on her blog and it's going to start next Monday, October 12th. So if you are interested in joining it and stitching along with that, I will put the link to her website, her blog, on the in my description box so you can check that out and see if you want to join. So I just, you know, from my stash, put that together yesterday because I, you know, just want to try it out for once. All right. So that's how. So I went to, I did get to go to Hobby Lobby and to Joanne's, but I still have not found a piece for finishing that advent calendar from Crochetta Gogo. Um, and so I just can't, I can't figure out how I want to do the finishing and what I want to do. So I don't want to start it yet because I don't know what fabric I'm going to use, if I don't know how I'm going to finish it, if I'm going to stitch each day individually, or if I'm going to stitch all of the days together on one piece. Hobby Lobby had, it looked like most of their Christmas stuff out, but I just didn't see anything there that I could use. And Joanne's had like, two tiny little sections of ornaments up and that's it. They just didn't have their Christmas stuff out yet. 
So I'm gonna have to try and get back out to the stores again in a couple of weeks and see if they have more Christmas stuff out. Or, I don't know, just hold off till next year. I don't know, I don't know what to do about that one. But I haven't found the right thing, so I'm, I really want to start, but I'm reluctant to start. I also did not find a frame for Kringles. I mean, managed to get to a few thrift shops that are out that way as well while I was out shopping, and I didn't find any sort of frame for that either. So I really need to get on that and see what I can find. Um, so I'm gonna have the piece done soon, but I need the frame to put it in. So, priorities. I need to finish my November cottage. I'm super close to that. I just have a little bit left um, with the cottage and some of the little decorative motifs going on. So I will get that done. Then I'm gonna get Kringles finished. So hopefully I'll have those two FFOs for you in my next video. Then I need to keep up with those two styles, the winter and the Noel, so that I don't get behind on them. And I wanna, you know, start this Hardanger cell and keep up with that too. So I've got three of those. I also need to work on the winter sampler banner. And I really, really need to pick out some ornaments for my daughters and get them stitching. I really want to make them ornaments every year. And I feel like this time last year I was nearly done with the stitching and assembling everything and it was all ready. I had a great idea. I loved it. I loved what they turned out. And this year I just haven't gotten inspired. So I need to just buckle down and make something at this point since it's almost the middle of October before I even get it started. So that's going to be coming up next time as well. Hopefully I'll have a few new starts of the, the Hardinger cell and some ornaments to show you next time and a couple of finishes as well. So uh, last thing that we need to cover is the giveaway. Right here I had won this pattern from Jackie at Cross My Stitches. It's Red House in Winter from Little House Needleworks and I used the YouTube random comment picker to pick the winner and she is Amy Seneva or Seneva, S-E-N-I-V-A. So congratulations, Amy. Thank you for your sweet comment. And I will get this out to you soon if you could just send me an email. I'll put my email in the description box below. Or you, if you're on Instagram, you can send me a message. I'm at Stitching with the Waves on Instagram as well. So you can just send me a private message over there. And as soon as I get your mailing address, I will pop this in the mail to you. I think that pretty much covers it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope to see you back again soon. Bye, everybody.